This episode of Basics with Babish is sponsored by Bright Cellars, a monthly wine club that matches you with fine wine you'll love and delivers it right to your door. Bright Cellars is offering you 50% off your first six bottle box, so follow the link in the video description to take the taste palette quiz and get started. I'm glad I have a little extra wine on hand because I'll need it to both make and enjoy alongside today's topic, fondue. Let's get down to basics. All right, so the first thing we gotta discuss when making fondue is a fondue pot. Of course, you could go with one of these electric joints that gives you perfect control over temperature, but if you wanna be a real badass about it, you gotta get yourself a reichel, which is basically just a little cast iron stand with a built-in chafing burner and an accompanying caculon, a cast iron enameled specialty fondue pot. Totally unnecessary, but if you wanna impress your friends with a bubbling cauldron set over a flaming cup of alcohol goo, this is the way to go. In the immortal words of Steve1989, MRE info, oh yeah, that's lit. Once we've got our serving vessel decided upon, it's time obviously to talk cheese. You can use almost any hard aged melting cheese, but the two most popular are Emmental, AKA the stuff that you picture when you close your eyes and imagine cartoon cheese, and Gruyere, a funky, salty, cave aged hard Swiss. But you could use other cheeses like Comte, Beaufort, Fontina, or Riblochon. Anything that's funky, slightly aged, and good at melting. Whatever cheeses you decide to use, we are grading out one pound's worth, or about 450 grams, grated on the large holes of a box grater. Then some recipes call for adding cornstarch to a bit of wine separately, but the ones I like toss it directly with the cheese, which helps the cheese more easily emulsify into the wine. Now that we got our cheese prepped, it's time to prep our pot. Whatever pot you're using, we're gonna rub it down with a bruised clove of garlic, making sure that every corner is generously coated with the oil from the clove. This might leave some little chunks of garlic all over your pan, which you can discard, but I like to leave them in there for a little garlicky surprise. Now to the pot, we're adding one cup or about 240 ml of dry white wine, like Silverscape's Sauvignon Blanc, available from Bright Cellars. Then once it reaches a bare simmer over medium-low heat, we're dropping the flame down to low and slowly adding one handful at a time our cornstarch-coated cheese while mixing constantly. Make sure all the cheese is melted before adding the next handful, and so on and so forth. This is in an effort to get the cheese to emulsify with the wine. If you heat it too aggressively, it could break and leave you with an oily gnarly mess. If this happens, it can be rescued. Just whisk together a tablespoon of cornstarch with about a quarter cup of wine and whisk until the fats re-emulsify with the cheese. Lastly and optionally, you could add a grating of fresh nutmeg and or a tablespoon of kirsch, a type of cherry brandy. Once all the cheese is melted and the mixture is smooth, we're going to take it off the heat. Don't worry if it's a little too thin, it's going to thicken up as it cools, but we're going to keep it warm either in our electric fondue pot or over a flame. Now all there is left to do is serve with some toasted chunks of crusty bread like baguettes. Swirl it around in the pot a few times, admire the strings, give it a twirl to twist up all the melty cheese, and pop it in your mouth. And there you have it, the basic Swiss fondue. A fork-shakingly delicious cauldron of wine and melted cheese. But how about some variations on the theme? A Germanic, or maybe more Americanized version, would be virtually the same procedure, but using a cup of beer and a pound of cornstarch-coated yellow and white cheddars. Whisk off heat until all the cheese is melted and served with some German soft pretzels and slices of kielbasa. Mmm beer cheese and sausage. But what if you want to really kick the calories into the stratosphere? For that, we need the Italian version of fondue, fonduta, made firstly and foremostly with about 300 grams of fontina cheese, trimmed of its rind and cut into half-inch cubes, which we're then going to cover with one cup of whole milk. Traditional recipes dictate that you cover and fridge this for 24 hours, but you don't really have to do that. Something you do have to do is separate four egg yolks from their whites and place them intact into a small bowl. Because Fonduta is basically fondue married with hollandaise. This means not only higher cholesterol, it means slightly higher difficulty, because this fondue must be prepared using a double boiler, or a heat-proof bowl set over a pot of boiling water. Into this bowl goes 100 grams of butter that we're going to melt completely before adding our milk and cheese mixture, which we're going to whisk constantly over very low heat until completely melted. We want the flame to be just high enough to maintain a bare simmer in the inch or so of water that we have underneath the bowl. Once the cheese 
cheese is completely melted into the milk and butter, it's time to start adding our egg yolks. Isn't that a beautiful sentence? We're adding the egg yolks one at a time and whisking until completely incorporated. Once all the eggs have been added to the party, it's time to start cooking and constantly whisking this mixture over low flame for an agonizing 10 to 15 minutes until the mixture is completely smooth, slightly thickened, and glossy. Don't worry if it's a little thin, it's gonna thicken up once we take it off the heat, which we're gonna do just before serving. Take it off the pot of boiling water and let it cool for about five minutes, at which point we're gonna pour it into a nice warm serving bowl and consume with chunks of toasted ciabatta. And if you're watching your waistline, just kidding, some crudite. And there you have it, fonduta, the fondue that your fondue wishes it could be. You could keep this warm in an electric fondue pot, but don't put it in a traditional fondue pot because the direct heat may cause the eggs to curdle. If you need to reheat it, just pop it back in the double boiler for a minute. However you enjoy your fondue, there is one simple rule. Should you make the rookie mistake of dropping your bread or sausage or whatever in the cheese, tradition dictates that you buy the next bottle of wine. But that shouldn't be a problem thanks to today's sponsor, Bright Cellars, a service that selects wine just for you from all around the world and delivers it right to your door. This service is only for adults 21 and older. The folks at Bright Cellars take pride in educating their club members, so each box comes comes with a wine education card for each bottle that outlines tasting notes, suggested pairings, ideal serving temperature, and origin. And if they send you a bottle that's not to your liking, Bright Cellars will add a replacement to your next box. Today I am enjoying my fondue with a Cactus Park Chardonnay, a full-bodied fruit-forward Chardonnay, which as you can see on its accompanying card is best paired with soft ripened cheeses and chicken cordon bleu, so it'll make the perfect accompaniment to all this rich melted cheese. Bright Cellars is offering you 50% off your first six bottle box, so be sure to follow the link in the video description below to take the taste palette quiz and get started. 